event management program. And thank you, the, the, the organizer, for this the possibility of participating in this talk and also for the possibility of this exciting discipline. It's all laughing. It's my very first time here. Um, well, today I'm going to be trying to, 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 to describe for you a particular way in which you can obtain exact results in the computation of pulse loops, expectation values, and correlators. And by exact results, I mean exact in the, in the current constant. So this is a topic I have been working for a while. But maybe I will focus on more recent results. Uh, and what obtained in collaboration with Pablo Pisani, who is a colleague uh, back in Argentina. And Andrew Spookerman, who is a PhD student at Barcelona and Costia Sarebro. So, well, um, maybe the scheme uh, of, of my talk can be summarized in a single slide. I will be considering Wilson loops in every one possible in minutes, and I will focus in, in a very particular type of contribution to the final diagrams. The, the, those are whose diagrams are known as ladder diagrams. And the, their definition is just Feynman diagrams that do not include vertices at all, so it's only propagators. Uh, and then I will try to, to show you with this argument that this, this resummation of, of ladder diagrams can always be translated to some integral equations of sort in the And we will see a few examples later on. And eventually, the idea is that we can use this um, resummation, and by studying these integral equations, we can study the ladder resummation in the in the form of the limit, and in spite of that ladders are just a partial account of all the possible contributions, we will see that the ladder summation captures the essential <coughs> capital behavior in some cases for, for the goods and loops, expectation values, and, and, and correlators. So, Is there some interesting limit in, in which you can show that they, they dominate? Yeah, I will, will discuss. So like the icon, in the iconal limit, we know, well, not, no, not for, not for Wilson lines, but for that, case, I, I, I will be focusing in two situations. One, one case in which uh, there is supersymmetry, we will see that uh, all other contributions cancel. And then I will see the parametric limit, which is called the ladder limit, which they dominate. It's not the So let me just motivate why we consider this. Well, why any report to be Certainly, we would like to understand a non abelian interactive fundamental gauge theories, and then in this category, uh, and equal for superiority in the simplest example. Not only that, it is the prototypical, it is the case theory in the prototypical example of the DSCFT. So, and why Wilson loops? Well, Wilson loops, in, not only in the equal four, but in many case theory, they are observable with neat and what valuable physical interpretation. So, for instance, you push by means of computer expectation values of Wilson loops, you can define the core and the potential that uh, characterizes the whether the theory is confining or not. You can also compute the discharge function, which is a condition that can raise the energy radiated by an accelerated charge. Uh, and in particular, when, when, it, when it comes for Wilson loops in any particular limit, the, the kind of Wilson loops are going considering, they are very interesting because they can be studied by a wide variety of theoretical tools that have been developed in recent years. So you can study these rules and loops either, for instance, this is what I'm intending to, to be about today, like the resumation of the perturbative expansion, you can use the CFT correspondence, you can use integrability, you can use conformal rules and you can supersymmetric localization. So and this is interesting even, not really, even for studying these, these tools, because you can do uh, like cross uh, check computations, you can repeat computations with different tools and, and to see that uh, uh, you, you get the same answer. Right? And I'm going to be focusing in the summation of ladders. And as I said, if ladders do not count for the whole thing, they, they are enough to, to capture the essential, in some cases only qualitative, but in some other cases even a quantitative agreement with the uh, strong capital computations done in, in some other way. So, the outline of the talk is I will just review the definition of Wilson loops, what kind of Wilson loops in equal force to real means 
we were considering and how to account for expectation values of these loops in the, in the ADSEFT dual picture. And then I will jump onto this uh, resumation of the ladders and I will try to, to, to sketch how it is that you, 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 you describe this resumation of the ladders to by some time into our equations. Um, and then we will study these integral equations that come to ladders into cases. If there, is, there are some supersymmetric cases in which you, you, can, you can argue that the ladders is the whole thing, so all the interaction with diagonals uh, seems to cancel. And not only that, also in these supersymmetric cases, you can exactly solve these integral equations. So in those cases, you get exact answer. And then we will, I will just discuss another situation in which you, you can take a parametric limit in which you can argue that ladder diagrams dominate over the rest. So well, you can just study the, the, the this integral equation in that case, take the strong capping limit, and then to, uh, you, you can compare it with the other side. So one of the uh, motivations, uh, why? why I'm emphasizing you know, in the, to structure the strong capping behavior of Wilson loop. This it, it, is because we, uh, we would like to, to make like an explicit um, contrast and comparison with, with the ADSAP predictions. And so that's why I'm interested in the strong capping limit mainly. Uh, well, and then I will just summarize and, and discuss some properties of related to some of the things that we're going to mean. Uh, okay, Wilson loops. Well, the Wilson loop is a non local observable in the image theory. The, it is defined is as the path forward exponential of the economic decay theory. And its expectation value measures only on a medium phase that an external non dynamical particle gets when it is forced to, to, to follow some closed trajectory. So this definition, it depends on, on two things. It depends on well, which trajectory will you, will you pick for, for this external particle. This is coming in this parameterization. And it also depends on the, on the type of particle <coughs> you make. You move along this, this close to two. So the, the type of the charge of the particle. And this is encoded in this representation in which uh, you take the twice. In the rest of the talk, I'm going to be only talking about the fundamental representations so that I will not do this today. <coughs> so that's why we are also going to talk sometimes about quarks, particles, and things like that. I mentioned uh, earlier that Wilson loops has valuable physical information about the H theory. So I will mention just two examples. One of the typical examples to consider a very elongated rectangular Wilson loop. If you compute the expectation value of this Wilson loop in this elongated rectangle, you get that the bed is roughly the exponential of some quantity that is proportional to this long extension, t. And the, 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 constant, the constant proportion is, is, is some function of the, the distance r between the quark and the anti quark. And this is nothing but the quark and the potential. And independent, depending on how this, this function behaves uh, with, with, with the distance, with the separation, you can, you can uh, claim that your theory is, is the least or not, or there is no confinement in the theory. Right? For instance, if, if you have confinement when, when this potential grows linear in the distance, right? and, and if you have that, you see that, that, that the dissipation value will be like the exponential of some constant r times t, which is the area in the, the enclosed by this contour. So and this is the famous area no? that determines confinement in the HDL. So that's one thing you have to extract from the definition of the Wilson loop. Another, another uh, quantity with physical information it could be this restorative function. You can, if you consider now a wavy line, so a, a, a trajectory which is slightly deviating from the straight line, here from expectation value, you, you can extract this restructure function, which is nothing but the coefficient that comes in front of this 
analog of the Larmor formula that, that computes the energy radiated by, by an asymmetric structure. So these are two very physical quantities we can compute from this loop. But as I said, I'm, today I'm not talking about, about these, these, these quantities. I really mainly consider the circular Wilson loops because uh, but you, you, can, you can make them to be super symmetric and somehow, uh, in some of the cases, it's even very important for us. So roughly, why is that lasting treatment? Why, why is the expectation value of a wavy Wilson line? Well, you, you have to do two things. Well, first, you would like to, to, to. I mean, this is like the formula, Lagrange's formula. You will, if you compute this, you can see that it is reduced like, to the insertion of displacement operator. The displacement operator is, is something that, uh, if, if you insert it in the, in the loop, it, 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 it makes like a transversal, a small transversal deviation of the line. In the case of, uh, well, in this case, it's Roughly, uh, it's like proportional to uh, the field strength. So uh, then you, you can also see that uh, when you consider, uh, uh, for instance, is there a mark? Well, if you consider, imagine a straight line, and then you make a, like a, a, a small kick. So you, you can uh, realize this, this small deviation with just the insertion of, of, of a display. So there are two computations you can make that it, it, it has to do with this, the, the, the correlation with the lumen of two space operator. So that's the way in which you, you, you correlate these two things. So. But as I said, well, here I was talking about with solutions in general, but I, I'm going to be working in general for fossil energy. In the general force of means there is the possibility of finding another kind of force loop. In addition to the, uh, the gauge field, you also have scalar fields in the, in the actual representation of the gauge field. So you can imagine that if you could define this force loop that represents an external particle that not only couples to the gauge fields but also couples to the scalars, so then you, you have this, this other Wilson loop you can consider. So essentially, you add a couple of scalar fields with this unit vector, this is a vector of R6. And the reason, the motivation for doing that is you, this allows, or with this inclusion, if this is a unitary vector, this is locally supersymmetric. Anyway, if, if you now if you would like to compute for, for every trajectory, you would like to compute the expectation value of such a good solution, it's typically going to be a function of the of the two scattering of the gauge theory. So if this coupling is small, usually you can rely on the perturbative expansion to so compute for the expansion of the coupling. However, if you are in the opposite machine, you of course you cannot typically trust this expansion anymore. So you, you have to do something else, but this something else, in this case, it could be a easier scale. So well uh, let me just review what uh, ADS CFT says about this loops. So in, 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 let, let me just go back to the how it is what the origin is. When, when you have to, 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 to propose ideas CFT corresponding, you start with a stack of many different brains. Um, so one, one way of realizing this external particle, like the particle very massive with no dynamics, you can achieve that by just separating one of the one of the deep brains. So what you have you get here is like a very massive particle. Now in the fundamental, because this ends, this, this end point is, is in one of the, the difference here. And now when we go to the near horizon limit, what you see is like a string, an open string flying to the boundary of ideas. So typically what is what is this is what you typically do in idea CFT. And in, in any idea CFT computations, the field theory data enters as a boundary condition for a computation you do towards the interior of ideas. So, more precisely, uh, the prescription was given in the early days by Malacena, Ray D, and D, and they, they proposed that the expectation value of a Wilson loop ending in some contour, when well, we're using the fundamental representation, is computed by the partition function of a string subject to a very specific boundary condition such that the endpoint of the string ends at the boundary of the ideas in the contour. 
right? If you pack into a or all this configuration, you will be computing the rules and expectation value. Of course, since this is ADS, a secure space, this partition function is, 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 not, is not easy to do. So what you typically do, what you can do, is just to install this partition function in a semi-classical approximation. Yes? And in that case, it will be just finding the minimum of this again. This thing is still action. Yeah? As you probably know, that the string action is just computes the area of the worksheet. So, in a semi classical approximation, what you are computing is, is um, a surface of minimal area ending on the control boundary of ADS. And this is this semi classical approximation is, is, is valid as long as the coefficient in front of the string action is very large. Right? That's, that's uh, what, what you require to trust this, this approximation. And then, you, when you see what is this coefficient, Okay, you get this one over alpha prime of the length of the string square, the tension, but you also, uh, since you are formulating this in this curve space, in this radius of curve, which is the radius of ADS, you, you pull out a, an R square outside, so you need this R over L to be large, and this is related to the, to the, to the, to the, the ADS here, typically to the this one square, R over the square of L, the, the, the string length is related to the square root of lambda, so this semi classical approximation is valid as long as lambda is very large. So this is um, what you can do in the, in the opposite machine, where, where you cannot trust that sort of uh, expansion. So one of the things I said is I, I will be interested in doing some precision tests. So but this is typically a challenging problem because a few theory results calls for lambda small, while string theory computations called the opposite machine where lambda is very large. So in principle, if you would like to get this precision test, you would need some exact result in the gauge theory. But in interacting uh, gauge theories, this is very trivial, but luckily for Wilson, in the equal force supernatural, there are different ways of obtaining exact results for expectation by the Wilson loops. One of them is just the summation of Diagrams for symmetric localization or for integrality. So I'm not really talking about the of today. So, and as I said, in any of these cases, when you have like an exact answer for some observable limit on some units and loops, you can take the strong capping limit and you can contract the figure you result in the string theory computation. Okay, now let me. Uh, Start with the what well, the most the most technical part of the world for farmers and industries is a question about the idea of the of the job of what I'm trying to, to compute. Well, as I said, I, I will be considering uh, some particular type of Feynman diagrams that contribute to the expectation value of Wilson loops, many were possible in the mills. Uh, those are large diagrams, and as I already said, those are Feynman diagrams that do not account any vertices at all, and with no vertices, only the variables. So, uh, let, let me define this auxiliary quantity, which is just a non abelian phase factor. It's, it's the factor that exponential of this, this is the quantity that appears in, in our local supersymmetric motion loop, it's the gauge field and the, and the scale in some direction. Uh, and we would like to compute the the best expectation value of the trace of this non-linear phase factor. So you see that in general this is not a Wilson loop, but if you consider now t1 and t2 at the starting and the ending point of this contour, it is such data that if you get a close contour, this 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 quantity w uh, will be computing the expectation value of the Wilson loop. Will, will you allow the numbers of the ladder cross each other? I mean, are you considering only planar planets? Yeah, if you have the fundamental representation, uh, the planar uh, limit you should not allow to tend to, to, to cross that. So but then, if, if you go to just k, I mean, next, uh, any uh, symmetric representation when you don't need to be very large, uh, it's already the counting is, is you have also to consider crossing the errors. But for the fundamental and large end, I will be able to yes. Okay. You will not allow that question. Yeah. Okay, so how do you compute the large contribution to this quantity W of, of T? 
Well, you have to expand this exponential, and there you have integrals of these out operators, but condensed scalars and, 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 and gluons, and then you have to contract it with free propagators. So free propagators of the scalars and free propagators of gluons. Uh, and then you can consider the following. You can, when you consider like the correlator of these uh, operators in the, in the definition of this Navian test, uh, it, it's going to be a combination of scalar propagators and, 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 and gluon propagators, and also they are going to depend on the parameterization of the curve. So, so you, you, you interpret this correlator as an effective propagator, which is depicted by this dashed blue line here. And of course, this is going to be a function of t and t prime, where uh, you, you are inserting these this, this, this local these operators. And, and the actual dependence of t and t prime depends on the curve, yes, the form of, of the shape of your curve. Um, so, so in that GT formula, the first term comes from scalars and the second term comes from gauge bosons? Exactly. Right. You see? So let me go back. Uh, the scalars are coupled with the x dot, the, sorry, the gluons is coupled with the x dot and the scalar with the, the absolute value of x. So, so, x. so this came from the scalars and this from the gluons. And the sign coupled with this i. So um, and then I, I would like to do this. this the, the, so the, the expectation value of this in the real phase is going to be this function, which schematically are going to be drawing at this. Blue block. So I'm here using a straight line, but this is just a schematic. This, this can be an arbitrary curve. So this blue block represents all uh, uh, ladders in the planar limit, if you want. So it could be that there is no propagator, it could be one propagator. So you could have, for instance, two propagators. If you have two <coughs> propagators, you need four points. So the first point can be contracted with the second, and the first with the, the third, and the first with the last one. So and this, of course, you have to consider all possibilities. If you interact with the limit, this is, is suppressed by 1 over n squared, so you, you would dismiss this like that. And of course, you can consider more variables and so on. But this is just uh, an expansion of what I represent with this uh, block. So, but the thing is that you can obtain an integral equation for this, this quantity. And how it is, so imagine that now I'm taking the trace of this is this dash red line is just like a closure of the, the gauge index of the trace. So but there is a, an integral equation that you can well you can write it precisely but the, the, the schematically derivation will be as follows. So the, the first contribution is it could it could be that is uh, you could have no propagators or you could have one or more propagators. If you have no propagators, it's just taking the trace, this is going to be a factor of n or one after you normalize and this is but then let's say that this all this integral corresponds to all the possible uh, contributions with one or more propagators. If you have one or more propagators, let's call T prime the rightmost point that is contracted with the propagator. So, so to the right of T prime, there could be no propagator, uh, with no, no, no blue lines of the So that's why uh, there are just red dash lines to the right. If it is the rightmost point, and uh, this contracted with the propagator, the propagator should go to another point in the, in the segment T second that necessarily have to be on the left, right? So, and then you will have this, uh, the, this factor of G, T prime T second, because of this propagator, and then you have to move T prime and T second for all possible values, and this is this uh, chain integrals for T prime and T second. But not only that, then you have to consider all other uh, ways in which you can, you can contract points in this segment with propagators. As I said, there, is, there could be no propagators in, in the third segment, but you can have propagators here and here. So you do not have these propagators at the start in the first segment, you can see on the second and the, and the second, because that would be no plan. So you could only have propagators that start and end in this first segment, or propagators that start and end in the second segment. But that, those are again these blue blocks that in the smaller segments. So this, this one is just uh, W of t second, and these ones are W of t prime minus t second. Yes? So it, now in, in this, in this sketchy way, you, you can convince that uh, this function that accounts for uh, the ladders uh, 
must satisfy this integral equation. Okay. As usual, when you have an integral equation, you can style it iteratively. For instance, you can say, put in the right hand side omega w equal to zero, and then the first iterative approximation, iterative approximation will be w equal to one. Then you, you, you plug here one, and then you would get the second approximation, and so on and so forth. Sassoci iterative approximation are exactly in correspondence with Sassoci perturbative orders. This equation will apply for arbitrary shapes. Shape yeah, yeah, so far I'm not saying anything mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. And then, if this you manage somehow to solve this exactly, you will be uh, getting the, the full, the all loop sum of ladders diagrams. But as you said, I mean, this is code for any shape, but trying to solve this for any shape would be really a uh, daunting task. Nevertheless, there is a simpler case. The case becomes very simple. If you consider now, it's simpler also. Now, if you, we will go back to this. Now, if we plug the, the parameterization of the circle, this effective uh, propagator becomes just a constant. So just in that form, if you could go back one transfer, one transfer, the formula for the G. Yes. Oh, I, I, a stupid question, but I'm a little confused about why the ends of the two the directions in the SO6 space are the two points that are not in that formula. Why they are not? Yeah, so it's I'm taking so far, I'm taking it, uh, the coupling with the square has to be in a fixed direction. No, no, no. The curve. Later on, so thank you for the question. Later on, I'm going to consider correlators and I'm going to consider different um, uh, uh, orientations for different numbers. Yeah, I should have aside that. So, so far, if this is a Wilson loop in which the, the, the internal space, the orientation of the internal space is fixed. And it could be something more general, but I, I work in this simple case. So when you do that and you consider that the signal we can do, you get that this effective potential, this effective propagation is constant. And now this is a massive simplification because if we go back to our initial equation, this is constant. So this is really difficult because of G. But once G is constant, you put it out, and what you have here is essentially a convolution of W and W. So since this is just uh, an equation that relates W, uh, the convolution of W itself, you can solve it easily by doing the Laplace transform. Then you just do the Laplace transform, and then you get like a quadratic equation for the Laplace transform with this function you're looking for. Right? So you solve this quadratic function, you get this one function of z, you have to transform back, and then you get that this W of t, for this case of the circular is it's just the decimal function. Right? And as I said, so this, uh, recall that this, this can be related to the Wilson loop once you, you pick T1 and T2, or, or they are different, such that the, the two points are the same, and in the case of the circular Wilson loop, this is for the difference between T2 and T1 being 2 pi. So if you now compute W of, t, of 2 pi, what you get is the, the contribution, the large contribution to the expectation value. Uh, and then by this uh, integral equation, we recover when it was computed many years ago, two years ago, by Ernst and Samuel Pizarrembo, those two were tries to study this if I was in the day. And so there's a pressing question you should be asking now. How do we sum, or how do we include diagrams that, we, that include, that count, that include vertices? So, and the answer is we don't, we don't, we don't have. And why? Well, because already this paper by Ernst and Samuel Pizarrembo, they, they show that there are two loops. All diagrams with, with vertices cancel among themselves. So you, you might assume, even you know, they, they, they say, at, a, at the moment you can assume that this cancellation will, will, will happen to any perturbative order and accept that this learn comes from the exact You We can do that. This is not very uh, nice way of saying, but then there is an, another way of arguing that so you can do the computation in a different way. Which Assumes it makes no assumptions on, on, on any cancellation, which is supersymmetric globalization. And you get exactly the same answer. So, so what is the supersymmetric argument for the old loop? Uh, yeah, well, it's, so it's like saying it's like, it's like saying that uh, yeah, so it's, uh, you, you get some semi-classical contribution corrected by the one loop determinant. Exactly. And then, so and, I, I and, and then the rest can be checking the, the, the words so to see how I try to to sketch the idea. I mean, I would say it's going to be just in two slides. But, uh, but, but sorry, you're going to prove it by localization? Because in the last slide you said that it just matches. Yeah, no, I'm going to say, uh, 
even using localization, you're going to get the same result. And then since this that does not assume any cancellation of Feynman of interaction errors, since the exact answer agrees with the... No, I know, but how, how, how would you argue that, uh, that uh, without doing the computation that, the, that this... Uh, no, without doing the, this localization, I, I know how to argue that to higher loop uh, diagrams, Feynman diagrams will cancel, but just by uh, agreement between the summation of flags and the exact answer, you, you conclude that interaction diagrams you are not taking into account with yes. so, so this agreement holds for the circular? It holds for the circular, yes. Yeah. Let, let, let me... Uh, yes, we do. So, it is, I mean, it, this, I mean, the, the, this internal equation that comes lattice comes for any case, yeah. but I was only able to solve it for the circular case. For the circular case, since it is super symmetric, and, uh, you, you, the, 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 there is the possibility of doing the computation independently and without uh, this, this, this you, don't, you don't count Feynman diagrams at all and you get exactly the same but, but if one repeat the perturbative calculation I mean just the, the straightforward perturbative calculation not in the circular but with another shape one can see that the diagram don't count anymore? no, no, no yes, exactly, I agree no, 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 that, that cancellation is, 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 is uh, an, an accident yeah. or a particular uh, Property. The property of, of the supersymmetric circle is no, no, absolutely. I don't, I don't try to say that it is cancellation. So that's why, in other cases, you have to do something else. And we can discuss this a little bit later on. But since I mentioned it, let me just sketch. So the idea of localization is um, imagine that you have a particular theory that is invariant by some supersymmetry type Q. Not only the action is, is invariant, but also the measure of the path inter is invariant. So you, 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 you try to deform this partition function by adding some, some variation, some quantity d with a parameter t. And in order for this to still be invariant under the, this delta q, you, you require that this delta t squared is, is equal to zero. Now, if you deform your partition function in this way, you, you realize that actually this partition function is independent of this parameter t. So now you compute the derivative of this partition function with respect of t. You get this. So now you can like write like the variation of the full thing, and then you, you, you see that this is zero. So in other words, if, if this partition function is, is not really dependent on t, you can compute it for t equal to zero, which was your original theory, or you can compute it for any other value of t you want. In particular, you can compute it for t going to infinity, and in that case, when t goes to infinity, the semi-classical approximation of this uh, partition function becomes exact. So you have to do like a like the classical, so you, you have to consider only like the critical points of this delta p. So that's where the, all the configurations get localized only to those critical points. So you you, you know, the, 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 the minimum of this uh, modified action, you want the computation that this is exact, and I think what the results you're going to get depends a lot on what is your theory, what is your, your delta v. So this is I don't have an answer to it. You have to work this case by case. Uh, but in some cases, what you get is a, is, is, is a very simpler localized system, which you, in some cases, can compute exactly. So, and moreover, when, so if, well, of course, in the theory, there are many operators that are imagined that the, the, the supersymmetry you use to localize. So those, the perturbation values and correlators of those, you can also compute in the localized system. So, and the thing is that, I don't know, it's not very detailed, but in the case of any one force for your mills, this uh, system is, the, the, the localization is massive. So you get reduced only to constant matrices, uh, and, and, and the system is just the Gaussian matrix model. So the partition function of the force for your mills will be by this uh, Gaussian matrix model. And moreover, the circular we can do, but just show you that the, I was able to sum the ladders. The, the ladders it is invariant under the supersymmetry that, we, that is, uh, was used to create this localized system. So you can compute the expectation value uh, in the localized system. And the localized system is just the expectation value of, of this, the trace of the exponential of the matrix of this system. So it is just a simple computation. So of course, matrix, matrix models, Gaussian matrix models are very well understood. So you can compute this. This is just you, this, you, you go to the basis of eigenvalues and you get like a semicircle bigger, semicircle long for the distribution of eigenvalues. You do this integral 
and you get exactly the same basic function. Yeah. And here I, mean, I was not assuming anything about lines or interaction. So this is the exact answer. And agrees with the sum of lines. So in this case, all the things I was not counting should cancel. Yeah, that, that's not, that was the point. I mean, in principle, with the derivation, you can also keep them fine. Yes, yes. I was going to mention that at the end. Yeah, that's right. So here, this is, is, this is a semi the, the large end approximation. Yeah, right. But you can do it exactly in the program. Yeah. yeah. In like 15, 16 years ago, Gross, Drucker, and maybe somebody else had yeah. proposed that another argument, an earlier argument for this matrix model, applying conformal transformations and straight rules and length. Um, is that argument, you know, correct or? Yeah, I, 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 even in this paper by, by um, Ericsson, Sopenhoff, and Sarembo, they realized, so that they do the counting of Lada, and then they realized this counting is exactly the counting of the matrix model. So they, they couldn't say why, but they, they, they make that uh, remark. So this counting of Lada is equivalent to, to, to counting uh, some matrices. So, but then they were working in the, 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 the planar approximation. Then Drucker and Gross, what they claim is that uh, this matrix model, and then Sarenov and Sarenov, which we're talking about, was even exact for lack of finite n. But then I, I don't sure, I'm not sure that they, they, they have a really good proof that this comes. This, the, the, the proof that the, the matrix model was exactly completely the efficient by the rules of is worked by, by best in like seven years after. But the difference between the paper of, of Elkins and Lopez and and Drucker and Gross is that Drucker and Gross claim that the matrix model was exactly even for final But they also had an argument. Yeah, yeah no, was... probably, probably you're right, but it sounds... But I just don't know whether the argument's right here. Yeah, yeah, but since I don't exactly the argument, so I don't want to. <clears throat> okay. Let's that a little bit, because... Well, it's now you have this exact um, answer, you know, this is what I was observing at the beginning. You can take the strong cutting limit, and then you, you will get that if you live in order in this large uh, lambda, the expectation value should be claimed as the exponential of the score of lambda. Then you go use AES CFT, you have to find what is the, the world should have ends in the, in, the, in the circle, and this is point correct corner, and you can find that this is just a uh, sphere. And then you compute the regularized area, and exactly you get this potential of this problem of lambda. So this is a, a check of ideal CFT. It's not very impressive, it's a check. Anyway, so let, let me go to, to this most recent stuff that uh, is what uh, we were doing at uh, this, this, with these collaborators this year. So we will learn to count the others now, not for the expectation value of the single rules loop. But for the connected correlator of two the, the connected correlator is the correlator minus the product of independent expectation values. <laughs> and we will focus on circular loops, concentric circular loops. Loop. So we have two Wilson loops uh, of different radii, but uh, concentric and well, separated by a distance h in space time, and also is uh, related to. She has questions. I, I, I will not consider in this case that. The orientation in the external space could be different. So this one is uh, pointing the north pole of the spine sphere, and this one is pointing some other direction for the angle of gamma. So gamma is like an internal space separation. The, the so this was for gamma equal to zero, was originally also quite studied many years ago. So the new thing was to, to do around this, and by turning on this gamma, we were able to uh, encounter a situation in which the correlator is supersymmetric and in which we can implement the value. So, so now... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Am I related to asymmetric polarization? Asymmetric? Polarization. Polarization. <coughs> what is that? What do you mean by that? Uh, just the angle between... Uh, so, uh, what is the definition of internal space? No, internal so space is, I mean, as, as I said, I mean, this is super, super symmetric, which will look uh, happens also to the scalars of the multiple mills. You have six of them. So how do you couple to them? It specifies the direction is and it has to be unit vector otherwise this would be non-supersymmetric. So that's why yeah, I don't know what's an aspect. But it's just 
to which scalars in this class. This so yeah, like I was saying, so the first one is a little bit scattered with 5, 6, and the second one is a little bit scattered with a combination of 5, 6, and 5, 5, something like that. So this is what I mean. So that separation defined as something, you know, product. Yeah, in between n in one loop and n in the other. Well, what I was saying, now we have different kind of, of, of now when we see this is correlators, I have it like extra label because now this, these operators can be points in the first or the second, or this is like A and B. So then there are two kind of propagators, effective propagators. Once I, I still draw in blue, I'm calling them rainbow, with, with the two points are in the same circle. Then we already see that for the case of this circular loop, this, this, those are constant. However, there is the possibility of having an effective propagator between the first three connect, that connect the two loops, and those are we call it to certain name of life for those. And then the, those are functions of the other prime. So and then you, you have to compute this like the connected correlator. So this is uh, closely related to this quantity that I'm calling K here. And then when you derive an integral equation for this K, you see that you need to, to define this other option, which is gamma, which is, is quite similar, but the difference you see here, you have a single trace, so the two non-Aurelian phase, non phase factors inside the same trace, and here you have two separate traces. You can go in and try to, to, to argue in a similar fashion and there is an integral equation for this k, so, but, so in this case, it's not, it's not a close integral equation because it, k depends on some integrals and in this case, and this function that I used we computed before, but also this other auxiliary function gamma. So now you have to try to get like an integral equation for this gamma, and you could do it, and you know the details. So you get like this integral equation for this auxiliary gamma, and this, and this is a close integral equation because it depends on your gamma. That you, as I said, is this basic function that we already computed as you know. So the procedure would be. First, compute this solve for this integral equation for gamma, then go back to the integral equation for k, plus gamma, and try to solve it, and eventually evaluate this k in 2 pi, and then you will get the connected correlator. Of course, as you can imagine, this is very complicated, but because of the addition of, of this new parameter, there is a case in which uh, you, you can get a simple answer. <coughs> Let me call it, this is effective propagator in the lattice when you connect the two loops. It, you get like two functions of that involves cos of t and t prime. They, they are quite alike, so it, it, they could be constant if this cos gamma was minus this other coefficient that depends on the space-time parameters. And so if you make, if you go to deliver to the very first particular case in which you relate the space separation and the internal space separation very precisely through this formula, this effective lattice propagator is also constant. Uh, so the space separation is separation between centers? Yes. It is the, 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 the circular with no more um, concentric. So they are actually two planes. The two planes which are separated by separated height? Separated by edge. Okay, thank you. And this is presumably some sort of supersymmetry. Exactly. So first you, you discover this by just demanding that you want this to be um, constant, then you see, you realize that you can solve this in a similar fashion to the Laplace transform the integral equation and get the exact answer. Now it's, it's a well combination of special function, but it, it, this is exact anyway. And then you realize that this critical case makes the correlator supersymmetric. So the, the, the two loops and loops, individually, are, they are supersymmetric, but in general, they do not share any supersymmetry. But for this very precise relation between H and gamma, they share some supersymmetry, this the supersymmetry used to localize, and then you can compute it using localization. In this case, the connected correlator is computed with this expectation value of two traces. Uh, the sign is because they, they have opposite orientations, the, the, the circular loops, the, the circular loops, and then you get exactly the same answer. Is the supersymmetry that's preserved, does it have a component of the superconformal transformation? Yes, yes. In those circular loops, they are supersymmetry, they are never fully concurrent, it's a combination of but that's why they depend on the position. Right. Because it's super 
So, but let me, how much time do I have? Okay, 15 minutes. So, let me finally go to this uh, level of Again, it's, it's like the, the vision and, and, and an idea we use for the, so we, in the past we, 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 we did this level limit in the study of the Casper and the dimension, but now let, let, let us try to, to, to do the same limit in this case to see if we can, we can access some strong cutting limit which can be constructed in the same So what is this level limit? So let me emphasize that it requires some analytical continuation of this internal gamma because it's a limit in which you take cos gamma to be a very large number, going to infinity, and the coupling constant does come to going to zero in a way that this lambda hat, which is the product of lambda and cos gamma, is fixed. Now, let us consider to any perturbative order you can classify, uh, uh, organize uh, different contributions, for instance, to loop. To look order, to do the order, you have, for instance, you could have two ladders, and in this case, this, this, this contribution would be order lambda half square. You could have a ladder and a rainbow, but the rainbow doesn't have, have one cost less, so you have lambda half square over cos gamma. And also, if you have some interaction diagram, so you might have loop correct to the propagator, this is also going to be lambda half square over cos gamma. You have only one cos gamma here, and you have cos squared here. So in, 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 by taking this limit in which lambda hat sticks and cos goes, goes to infinity, those two, these two diagrams are suppressed in comparison with this that only comes to lambda. So is, this, the, is this limit only the scalar property, the gate photon propagation? Is yeah, exactly. So in this limit, uh, this effective propagator is dominated by the scalar. So not only you dismiss, that the dismissal of invoking the ladder approximation, not counting interaction diagrams, it is, 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 is justified by this, but it is also that diagrams including rainbows have to be omitted. So whenever you have a rainbow, this is suppressed. So it means that in our integral equations, the rainbows were counted by this W function, this present function, this W of t has to be set to 1. So this is not only this, this really not only justifies omitting interaction diagrams, but also simplifies the integral equation. Right? For instance, the integral equation for gamma, let me go back. So we have W here outside, but also inside the integral, becomes simpler. Uh, it's, it's, it's one plus the integral. These integrals are cheap with, with gamma with no W at all. Sorry, what happens with this gamma when if, if, they become, if the loops become straight lines? What limit is that? Can you go back? No, probably it? it's probably well, it, it is true that we were consider, it's probably the case we consider in, in this other article. Uh, is, the, the, the cusp is in the, in the antiparallel limit. It yes. is true that it's, it's the relation of, so this is an auxiliary function. Maybe the, the way it relates to the expectation value is different because here I, I'm taking the, the two traces, I mean I'm taking like two traces. The trace is super interesting. The other why, why in the Casper or I mentioned that it's like the, the two yes. the two lines are inside the single. Trace. I guess I meant the other gamma, the small gamma. Was it, can you flash again? Sorry, I'm not talking about the gamma. Sorry, sorry. Repeat your question. Can, can you go back to the formula for the for the small gamma? That depends on the size of this. Uh... Sorry. Go back. <laughs> so this depends on this on this size, I guess. So it scales, I guess. Ah, I see. No, I mean the reason I'm asking this question is because uh, the, 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 the regime in which I'm familiar in which you can do this, this iconal limit when 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 only data diagrams dominate. Yeah. And typically in scattering amplitudes, what that means is that you have some uh, large impact parameter, you know, very boosted configuration. And, and then I was trying to see whether there's a way you, you can think of this well, as, you were as pushing to the pushing. Because we, we, there is another, I'm not talking at all today about this, there is another case in which the ladder is dominate. But you have to play with the, the rank of the representation. You take, instead of the fundamental, you take totally symmetric representations of rank K. Yeah. You take K is very, very large. 
Yes. Uh, like an econal approximation, and use the exponent, the expectation value of the loop is just the exponential of the one loop we Yes. To prove that. But this, one, this is also, also only in this uh, very large uh, rank symmetric representation. Otherwise, I don't see that thing. I, I, I don't know what you mean by economic situation. Well, in gravity, it means that the particles are, uh, are uh, very energetic, are very, very energetic, so they're heavy in some sense. I don't know. Uh, and then... I mean, I'm saying econo in the sense that it's like the exponential of the one in the south, and then it's not 30%. Maybe another way of saying is that there might be a limit in which you can replace one uh, Wilson line by the field it generates, and then solve for, right? But, but okay. But, uh, so, sorry, a naive question. So, when you take a, a cos gamma to infinity, you also keep cos beta equal co no, cos. No, 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 no. That, that, no, that, that was the main That was yeah, just. Yeah, uh, now, it seems you, if you cos beta is something fixed, this is. Yeah, so it's completely dependent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now, now I will like to turn to the next question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's verify what we So. But now you have this, this simpler integral equation, and then you can solve it. For example, now you take the derivative, just partial derivative with respect of E and S, you drop the one, and then you get, like, you get rid of the integrals, you get like this differential equation. But then you see that this T depends only on the difference S minus T, so it is convenient to make this change to coordinates, mm -hmm. so you have the difference Y with the sum, and then also make this answer for the Y dependence exponentially with some factor. Come and then you get a, a, an ordinary different differential equation for the x dependence, which is nothing but like a Schrodinger the problem. Where now these effective propagators play the role that has to say the Schrodinger equation. Right. Thank you. Um, and this is like a periodic potential. And uh, in, in general, solving this Schrodinger problem will be very difficult as well. But since I have in mind the possibility of applying this in the strong capital limit, Let's just try to, to, to go to that, to that machine. So this, this includes the la, 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 uh, lambda hat. So if you now go to the very large lambda hat limit, this becomes like a periodic potential and very deep. When, when you're once very deep, you can, it's like a, doing a semi-classical approximation. Then your, your states will be like uh, feeding a more tight way uh, the well. So, um, and, and, and then, Essentially, the ground state will be just the, the, the particles standing at, at the, the beginning of, the, of this wall. And then you can like, uh, solve so, uh, uh, this, this, this gamma function can be approximated by delta functions of very uh, at, the, at the minimum. And this coefficient omega zero, which is a uh, value, is nothing but the, the, the minimum, the value of this, this uh, potential at the minimum. Right? So then you plug this in the integral equation for gamma and you solve, and you get some expression that this is valid for large cos gamma and for large lambda. Right? So we hope, we, uh, we somehow we expect that this has to be in agreement with an extreme theory computation. So is this a large lambda or large lambda hat? Uh, well, since this, the, this combination of that we are, I think, is probably lambda hat, but uh, maybe you can relax somehow. But yeah, it's, it's a bit dodgy. It well, because I'm saying that I'm going to large lambda, but the, the lambda, the, 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 the lambda limit I define is taking lambda going to zero. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I recognize that this is the simple. But since this only depends on lambda hat, uh, I would say it's, it's lambda hat. Okay, now we got to in any detail, so this you have to consider now a string, a worksheet that connects the two loops. So uh, separated by h, so this like, the, the, the worksheet, the distance in the radial function has to be this, the radius has to be a function of r, but of course I cannot do it because I don't have any dimension, but if there is also a point carrier radius is a function of the separation and this angle defines here by an adding is also a function of x and of course this is subject to different boundary conditions. This is a problem that you can solve in terms of two point of motion, which somehow in a very complicated fashion encode the physical constants h and gamma, the space separation and the separation. And the relation between them is through some elliptic functions, it's, it's not 
uh, explicit, but somehow you, you can express everything in terms of HR. Then you compute the regularized area of this uh, solution, and then you get again some complicated expression of the and you have functions, some kind of function of H and gamma. Okay, but this is in general, we would like to consider how, well, let me let me skip this because there, there is a discussion with the crossover unified transition, something you, you would expect from you would probably you would not expect from the history point of view, but since now we are considering this uh, worship are connected to but there is always the, always the possibility of having a disconnected worship with two half spheres. So there is like a competition of, of, of worships, and then there is a phase transition. Uh, that was uh, somehow predicted by by Kosovo, by, by thinking of the single pitch. So somehow the rainbows, uh, so the, the ladder estimation shows a similar phase transition, but then of course the, 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 this solid qualitative match. Let, let me go to the uh, the ladder limit. So you can implement the ladder limit by taking this constant t or g infinity. In this case, this cos gamma becomes this simply this function t over <coughs> one minus s. You compute the regularized area. It's also very simple. It's just this product of t over s. You use this to rewrite to, to eliminate t in favor of cos gamma, and then you have this expression. But then also s, this constant of motion, is related to the space separation h in this way. So when you re re eliminate S, S by this combination, you get this expression, which is exactly what we get in the ladder limit for the, the sum of ladders. So I think this is more or less all what I wanted to say. Let me just make a final, some final comments. So what I try to, to give you or to tell you is how the, the, the all looks sum of ladder variance can be translated into nice equations, either for expectation value or for correlators. And then we discuss this, we discuss two cases, one in which uh, the Wilson loops or the correlators uh, becomes supersymmetric. In those cases, the ladder summation counts everything because there are arguments to, to claim that things we are not intending to have cancer. Uh, and moreover, in those cases, we were able to solve exactly the integral equations and Obtain answers that exactly agree with, with matrix model results. And another situation in which we will use this, this dice of integral equation was into this uh, parametric limit, in which, although in that case, vertex interaction there and could not cancel, ladders dominate over every, everything else. And then again, in this case, you, you get like a, a match between uh, the, the strong gravity limit and a, and a string theory. Right? And let me emphasize that this is a precision test in, in a non super symmetric case. We are very far away from, from the critical case. Uh, but also going back to Robert's question or comment that we know this expectation value exactly, not only in lambda, but also in, in, in the rank of the gauge group. So knowing this exactly opens the possibility of trying to do more intricate verifications for the safety. So we, we can try to do verification beyond the limit. So the first thing you try to do, for instance, for the expectation value of the simple the CPO was loop, you, you expand this Wesson function, and say that we check the area, which was this the behavior, and then you could try to check next to this, this, this order one, this log of lambda. And this is very funny because that, uh, this, this log of lambda means that there are zero modes. Um, and how would you compute that? Well, you have, now you, it's not, you have to go beyond this, the minimal area, you have to like, Consider fluctuations of these, these worship. So now you, you can say flat, quantum fluctuations of the worship, compute one of the determinants, and then you should be able to recover this. And I say that you should be able, I mean, I, I didn't include references, but there, there are like more than 15 or 20 papers trying to, to compute this. And this is a very elusive problem because of the zero mode. So most people claim. Well, zero modes are uh, topological, they consider like ratios of different expectation values of Wilson loops in order to avoid explicit computing. But nobody so far has computed this from an individual. So I, I think that this is still, uh, and, and it's interesting because if you're trying to do this, you, you, you have to sit down and be very precise on what you mean by doing one with computation, how do you regularize? It's, it's, it's a very subtle thing. So, but I think it's very important. 
but not only that, as, as for, for the matrix, for the matrix model, you get a result with this exact, not only in lambda, but also in the rank of the gauge group, so the expectation value is this some ladder polynomial and it's exponential. So you now expand this for large lambda, then you get this vessel, but then if there are other vessels with one over the square factors uh, that you should be able also to compute. So in that case, you would be there would be no quantum fluctuations in alpha prime, but it would be like G string corrections. Right? So and those are not even pretty if like considering like candles, but in the evening which the candles very did is just <coughs> like exchanging uh, cross string super random modes like Mavitons, Pilatons, and all that. So you should be able to do all these uh, unknown square corrections and try to recover at least this coefficient. And this is still not done. And, and I also this is very interesting because there are not many one on the and a verification of ADS CFT including one of the corrections. So this is, I think that these two uh, ways are very precise and interesting things to follow. Okay, thank you. Questions? So I, right at the end, uh, perhaps I missed, but did you say that by summing your ladder graphs you, you could see this phase, this gross of very tight phase transition? Yeah, I mean, even quantitative. I mean, yeah, quantitative. So I, I'm, I'm not. So what you, what you have here, you have like a competition of two phases. One is this area, which is H independent, because it's the area, and then you have like an H dependent area. So as you increase uh, the, the, the separation, the area increases at some point. Uh, this is minimal with respect to the one Right. So sure. it's not always that when you do this competition for the ladders, but it's, it seems. I mean. The thing is that if you do not take this ladder limit, you, you can get like a showing of problem, which is much more complicated because the differential operator is not just a second derivative. But there is a, a similar effect analysis for the ladder <coughs> uh, resumption without taking the, this ladder limit. And what you get is, 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 is an integral that is uh, in the large in the large lambda limit, uh, this, the contribution is dominated by singularities. So there, is, there are some similarities that are age dependent if you interpret it like the rainbow diagrams are dominating, and there are some other similarities in which ladder diagrams dominate. And here you get like an answer that is independent of age, and here an answer that is age dependent. But of course, the, the, the form of the, the current class will match because this is not precise, and if you are not in the ladder limit, you, you, you are omitting interaction terms, interaction diagrams that should somehow enter in the game. So, but but at, a, at least qualitatively, you have a similar phase structure. I, I just want to understand, sorry. Uh, you've got an integral equation, and are you saying there are two different solutions to the integral equations, and then you go from one solution to the other across that phase structure? Is that what you're saying, or something? Yeah, I something didn't understand what you said. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Like that. Yeah. But, but the solution which you have an analytic control is in the latter part, and it's always discussing the connecting, the connected area. No, right? no, I should have. Okay. So, this is like a Schrodinger equation, but with a more complicated, uh, it is like a more complicated differential operator. So, you, you, you can somehow solve it you doing Laplace, uh, with some spectral analysis, you're doing Laplace and Fourier transforms. And, and then you, you, you get an expression which is an integral, you, 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 you're studying the sum of the approximation. So, you have this, you have to. This is going to be dominated by the similarities of this integral. And there are some similarities that has origin in this uh, branch point of this function ladder U. I don't know what it's saying. Yeah, so. Uh, so that those are uh, what I, when, the, when the, this integral is dominated by the similarity with its origin with this branch point, this one we, what we call the, uh, the rainbow dominated situation. And it is, this branch point is not dependent on the separation because this is something that has nothing to do with the, you have to do this, it's just because of the similarity of this W function. But then there are other similarities that depends on the, 
and the separation of the two loops is age dependent somehow, it depends on the parameters, uh, one or the other dominates the side point approximation of the center. So it, it's very technical, sorry, but, but I mean, if you're interested, you can that's it later. <coughs> but the thing is that, in spite, I mean, of course, you, you, you do not expect the two diagrams to coincide, but they are at least similar. So you can claim that the low unit, there is no the precise matching, this is one the behavior that is captured in graphs. Yeah, from the point of view of bulk, both saddles always exist. It's just that their dominance takes up. So was, you have the same, same feature from your integrity question. If both yeah. solutions exist, which one dominates? Dominance over the other. Exactly. Is it the same type of diagram to contribute to both saddles? Yes. Or part of the diagram? The, the type of diagram that we found, we said that there are two different kinds of diagrams. Right? There are one which extends between the two loops, and then yeah, the other. Yeah, the rainbow and the ladder. If that's what you mean? Yeah. So the two saddle points, they, they come from the same type of diagram, or is it like that they are different diagrams? Yeah, so, exactly, so the third point is, the interpretation is like, rainbow diagrams are dominating over the ladders, I mean, but the integral equation counts all of them, so not only, it's only in the ladder limit that you dismiss rainbows, right? If you are in the, if you are not in the ladder limit, you, you your integral equation is counting everything, not only uh, it's counting everything, ladders and rainbows. But, and you could solve the integral you could solve the integral equation exactly. Well, not exactly, in the limit in which lambda is very large. So, exactly, of course, it's very large. But then there, there is like a, an approximation in the large lambda limit. It's similar to what we did here for the, for the large case, if we had it like a Schrodinger problem and you look at the minimum. So you have like a very complicated Schrodinger problem. You could not solve, of course, but you can like try to semi classically or classically. You go to a classical limit in a strong gravity. So this is this is this holds typically. But only the, the Schrodinger problem is a much more complicated one. Sorry, one, one more quick question. Uh, you talked about zero modes of this um, of the well sheet surface that uh, is the minimal area for a circle on the boundary. Uh, it, what is that zero mode, please? Those are, are conformal key vectors. So you can change the shape and then keep the area fixed? Is that? Uh, say it again. So I, I've got the boundary, it's a circle. Yeah. Now I thought that the, sorry, again, it's very naive question, but I thought that the surface that, keep, that is minimal area for a, bound, a circle boundary was unique. Yes. Which would be, I thought the statement that there are no zero. No, yeah, they are not the modes of a coordinate space. Not like you have different different worksheets, uh -huh. different parameterization with the ending at the same contour. They are like a they are conformal zero mode that when you when you fix your net, I mean when you do the, the quantization. Um, but they are I mean this is we do all this time when we do uh, But suppose I was just using number go direction. Yes. Now there's a unique, yeah. there's a unique surface, and then everything else around that is massive, uh, because it's unique, mm -hmm. and therefore you would expect no long lambda. And this naive, you would expect square root lambda and then one and so on. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with it? Um, it sounds like you're saying that it comes from your method of parameterizing the world sheet. That well, shouldn't be. It, it, it has to how you can how do you quantize? I mean, how you you fix your 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 uh, your gauge symmetry in your string action. So you have to go to a gauge, you, uh, and then you, you, you fix uh, the worship metric somehow. I mean, you, you have to do that. And, 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 and there is indeed that possibility which we have. Uh, so we, which are exactly the, and you can count them. I mean, even in the paper of Ross and Will, they mention this and they, they say that it's a three quarter because we can count that there are three, so the, the number of zero modes have to do with the topology of the watching, and then you expect three zero modes. Um, then there is also, you, you could ask why it is not in the straight line. And then the, the claim is that in that case, uh, it's not proof, it's an argument. The, the, they are not normalized. I see. Uh, is this for number three the same as the fact that you have to fix three vertex operators yeah. on, on the sphere? Exactly. Oh, that is, thank you. Okay, let's uh, thank you again. We'll take a 10-minute break and pick up with Rodolfo.